Well, today is Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent, the 40 days leading up to Easter. You know, not all Christians celebrate Ash Wednesday, nor even observe Lent for that matter, and that's fine. But for many of us, this is a significant time of self-reflection, self-examination, and self-discipline. It's a time of sacrifice and fasting and prayer and striving to be closer to Jesus so that we can become more fully the people that Jesus wants us to be. You know, Lent is a time of repentance, though not just a feel sorry kind of repentance. Remember that the word repentance in Greek metanoia actually means to think again from a different perspective, specifically from the perspective of what Jesus has already done for us. Now our world seen anew centered on Jesus. This is what repentance is all about. And that's what Jesus is trying to help his disciples to do right up until he was arrested. Well, actually, he was always trying to help his disciples do that. But especially that night that he was arrested, he, he gathered together with his disciples and he washed their feet, reminding them that he came as a servant. Then he shared the Passover meal with them and, and reminded them that he came to save them, to renew their relationship with God, and that they should remember that every time they broke bread and, and shared the cup. And, and then before they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he would be arrested by this mob and then led off to torture and eventual execution on a Roman cross, Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, reminding them that he was and is the real source of life. And that if we want to flourish, we will need to be rooted in him. So listen to these words from John 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that our joy, your joy, may be full. You know, even in the hours leading up to his death, Jesus is still talking all about life and growth. God, in his amazing grace and love, wants so much more for us. He wants a life that is fruitful and full of growth, a life that comes through abiding in Christ, through this living, active relationship with Christ, as we say here at Westminster, to know Christ, then to grow in Christ and go in Christ together. This relationship in him as his life and character flows into us like, like sap from the vine brings fruit. As God works in us by his spirit, we become shaped from within, becoming more and more Christ-like. And that is what we're going to be looking at over the next 40 days of Lent. How can we cooperate with what God is seeking to do in our lives? And God is seeking to do something in your life. How can we cooperate in a, as a church family with what God is doing here at Westminster and through us into our valley and into our world so that we can, as Jesus say, say, uh, says, bear even more fruit? This is what he wants for us. This is ironically what we want as well. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit 
is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. You know, nobody doesn't want those things in their life. We're, we're going to be talking about each aspect of that singular fruit. You notice it's fruit, not fruits of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to be talking about each aspect of that, that fruit on Sundays in our sermon series. And we'll be praying for God's work in our lives in simple prayer services uh, each Wednesday as well. And of course, we encourage you to prayerfully work through the fruit of the Spirit in your own devotion time, in your small groups, in your conversations throughout the week. How might it be that God is even now drawing new growth out of you? Where might God want to prune your life? And who might you cultivate this life with on, along the way? You know, a, cu a couple things to keep in mind this season of Lent as we look at a fruitful life. Uh, first of all, as we read in this passage, the fruit comes from abiding, right? Jesus is the source. God is working in us. This, this isn't about us justifying ourselves by our works. And this is not self-help. No, this is about allowing God to work in us, to flow through us with his life. And that means that it's not going to be uh, about us working really hard at being loving or really working on our kindness. That's a little like trying to staple fruit to a tree from the outside, artificially. Now, the fruitfulness that Jesus is talking about flows from within. It's, it's from our relationship with him. As we realize more fully the love of God, we can't help but love in return. When we know how, how great we have, uh, what, what a great gift we have received, we can't help but, but feel the response that then causes us to treat others differently, to love others unconditionally, just as we have first been loved. As, as uh, 1 John says, we love because he first loved us. You know, when you're in a real loving relationship, you don't need to be reminded to be gentle and patient. You just want to because you love that person. You're not going to be harsh with them because you love them, you value them. You're going to be cautious of them. You know, like when you pick up a baby, you, you don't need to have to be told to be gentle. You just are. This is about allowing God to work in us and shape our character from within. And then letting the natural outflow of these, this fruit uh, be seen and cultivated in our lives. It's about allowing God to work in us, inviting God's presence in our day-to-day -day life. And the second thing to remember is uh, being transformed isn't always comfortable. You know, Jesus says that even when we are at our best, we are still going to be pruned and made even more fruitful. And, and this is still God at work in us, that God can use all sorts of things to make us new, to make us uh, more who he wants us to be. You know, sometimes we're just flat out reaching for the wrong things. I mean, you could probably pause right now and just think about the things that you are reaching for in your life that are not bringing you, well, more life. Things that are, are not what God wants for us. And sometimes we're just rooted in the wrong things. We're abiding in the wrong things. And, and the natural outflow of that is anxiety or, or depression or, or the struggles or the anger or whatever, because we're, we're feeding off the wrong things all the time. So either reaching or, or rooted, sometimes there needs to be some pruning. There needs to be some cutting. And that cutting feels like loss. And sometimes it really is loss but it's loss that leads us to a better place. And a third thing to remember, this uh, still is primarily God's work. We are allowing God to work in us, but we are also most certainly invited and expected to cooperate with God's working in us. You know, relationship is really the key, that, that we grow as Christians through our rootedness in Christ. We grow in relationship to Christ as the Spirit moves in us. But relationships, as we know, the best relationships are things that we invest in. You know, we take time to invest in our friendships, to invest in our marriages, to invest in our children. We take time and energy and effort to make, to, to grow that relationship. Um, so we'll want to be taking time and energy and effort to grow our relationship with Christ. Deliberate choices that we can make on our part, deliberate choices uh, as we pray for God's guidance and then take actions uh, as we feel God leading us.
you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what we are going to be reaching for over the next 40 days. How might God be calling you into greater growth and fruitfulness this Lent, or even this day? You know, I invite you to do some self-reflecting in light of who Jesus is and all that he's done for you. And, and to even spend some time repenting, thinking again about who you are and about what life is meant to be and, and how you should be living it. And invite God to work in all of those areas of life, pruning, cultivating, growing you even today, even this Ash Wednesday. I'd invite you to, to join me in a prayer. I'll put the words up on the screen uh, just to close this little devotional time together. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, save us from ourselves. Save us from a past that we cannot change. Open us to yourself and to a future in which we can be changed and stand with us in the present, bringing life and growth and transformation and fruitfulness that we might look like Jesus in whom we abide. We pray this in his name. Amen. Well, God bless you this Ash Wednesday, and we hope to see you each and every week as we continue this journey of faith together.